Rub up your engines! Well, if you think Toyota quality is starting to slide, here's an email from Amir, and he says, Scotty, I've been following you since I was a teenager. July of 2023, I purchased a brand new 23 Toyota Corolla made in Japan. The cars had serious issues with the RPMs revving up. Other people have similar issues. I'll be driving the RPM will shoot up to 3,000 and act weird. I was parked and my RPM shot to the roof. I thought maybe I hit the gas pedal, but I didn't. Just the other day, I went crazy when I was driving down the road. There's also a service campaign for the ECU that needs to be reprogrammed because if you put your car in drive, it'll quickly apply the emergency brake. I also went to check on my brakes and sadly I found there was no grease on the brake slider pin. The dealership also torqued the screws so tight that when I removed them, the screws broke off in a bolt. None of the stores had new parts of the car, so I got 2021 Toyota Corolla slider pins which fit. Looks like even in Japan, their quality is not what it used to be. Sad but true, ever since coronavirus, Toyota seems to be having problems that they didn't have before. I think a lot of it has to do with coronavirus where they had to accept things that they didn't before. They used to reject all the really bad parts. Now the ones that are not too bad, they don't seem to be Projecting. They must have labor problems when they don't even have grease on the slider pins. I mean, there's stuff going on in Toyota that didn't used to happen, and this was one made in Japan that the guy bought. But there's a good ending to this story because today the same man emailed me and he said he got rear-ended while he was at a stoplight and the car was totaled, so now he's got to go get another car. And he's thinking probably not to get another Toyota Corolla after this experience. Well, the auto industry is pleading with the Biden administration to reconsider the automatic braking rule. They're trying to make these laws, you know, the legislators, they just make some idea up they think it can be put into reality quickly. The new rule is going to require vehicles to apply the brakes at speed up to 92 miles an hour hour to stop from having accidents. And the automakers say it's impractical and costly. And I agree entirely. These systems don't work that good now. What makes them think that in the near future, they're going to be able to work? There's ones that are slamming the brakes on when you're driving down the road. Then you get killed because somebody rear ends you. These systems are far from being perfect. Yet the politicians, well, in the future, in the next few years, you got to make these things work, right? What do those idiots know? Lawyer politicians, right? They don't know what's going on. They just, oh, it's the bandwagon of safety. Let's jump on it. They say that the rules that the Biden administration finalized earlier this year are practically impossible with available technology. They have a target date of 2029, so they think in five years they're going to have these systems up and running and actually working. As a spokesman says, driving these automatically equipped vehicles in the U.S. will become unpredictable, erratic, and will frustrate or flummox drivers. Yeah, because it'll screw up. They screw up all the time. I see them breaking on cars all the time. I had a customer in Houston, they got rear-ended in their Jeep because the Jeep decided it was going to break when it went on an underpass at highway. It thought the shadow was a truck or something. Then they got rear-ended because their Jeep stopped for no reason. The people behind them just slammed right in. Under the new rule, all vehicles required to be able to stop and avoid contact with vehicles ahead of them up to 62 miles an hour. In addition, they must apply the brakes automatically up to 90 miles an hour when a collision with a lead vehicle is imminent and up to 45 miles an hour when a pedestrian is detected. Vehicles must be able to detect pedestrians about daylight and darkness. I hate to tell them, but one of the worst things when you're driving a car especially at night. If you slam on the brakes and even stop straight, people behind you will probably rear-end you. You can't really, if something's going that fast, 45, 62 miles an hour, you can't stop if something jumps in front of you. But as I showed in a video I made years ago, you don't want to try to swerve out of the way at high speeds because you'll end up wiping your car out, maybe killing everybody in the car, rather than just knock the deer out. It's too bad for the deer, jumped in front of your car, you're going 60 miles an hour, might wipe out your car, but you'll be relatively safe inside the car. You start swerving at that speed, you might kill everybody in the car. So they're going to have automatic equipment that does this stuff correctly? I don't think so. Well, Stellantis is sure in a mess in the United States. The Stellantis dealers are even telling the CEO of Stellantis, our products are not competitive. And many of their executives are now jumping ship. It's a long, slow leak that's been years in the making. Now, I find this absolutely hilarious because if you know anything about automotive history, okay, Chrysler's had problems. They went bankrupt. We taxpayers bailed them out, right? The Germans bought Chrysler was Daimler Chrysler. They lost their shirt. Then was sold to a private equity guy, Chrysler LLC for a while. He was smart. He sold the whole thing and made money to Fiat, 
right? Now Stellantis runs Chrysler. Chrysler is a failing brand. Germans found it out. Fiat found it out. Now Stellantis is finding out. Hey, you bought yourself a crapper there. <laughs> The Germans figured it out. Fiat, I don't know if they figured anything out. Now Stellantis is finding out. Hey, Chrysler. But it was part of the package deal. Fiat, Chrysler. Well, <laughs> they're stuck with a hot potato now. Six key executives, Stellantis, just quit. The dealers are complaining. They don't have any affordable vehicles because, of course, they're always trying to sell more expensive stuff because there's a higher profit margin, right? Everybody knows Chrysler quality is pretty much garbage. And since... Stellantis took them. It was bad enough when Fiat took them over, the quality was going down. The weird thing was, when Mercedes owned them and it was Daimler Chrysler, the quality of a lot of the Chrysler products actually started to go up a little. When they sold it to Fiat, the quality started to go down, and when Stellantis took out, it's like down to the bottom, like a straight line down, like a roller coaster. So, <laughs> no surprise for me, I've been looking at the car industry my whole life. <laughs> And now the Europeans are wondering, oh, what are we going to do with Chrysler? Everyone's leaving and they make crappy vehicles that nobody wants to buy. Well, Ford says they found a new home to develop affordable electric vehicles, and it's in California, Long Beach. Now, why would you be moving to California where all the taxes and everything are high? Hey, at least Elon had brains. He moved to Austin, so the workers don't have to pay all the taxes. He doesn't have to pay all the taxes. Now, I'm assuming that Ford got money from California for setting it up there. I'm sure some kind of money changed hands. They didn't. Why would you go to a high tax state like that unless they gave you a deal where you're not going to have to pay tax on this or whatever? Some sweetheart deal is probably going on in the back room between the rich boys. Mayor Rex Richardson of Long Beach, who announced that Ford's building at Long Beach. So, you know, they gave them all kinds of sweetheart deals. They're not telling us, right? Now they try to hide all this crap from us. Here's the baloney that came out of it. Richardson, the mayor of Long Beach, said the city didn't offer any incentives to get the company to relocate it, but there was a courtship where company officials met at City Hall. Yeah, he's saying the city didn't offer any incentives, right? I'm sure there were state and federal incentives, right? <laughs> They always pull some technicality, right? Oh, they had meetings, right? And they just love the guy. Come on now. Don't give me this line of baloney. Stop hiding everything from us. Hey, I want to know what's going on here. You reporters out there, start doing some research to see where'd the money come from. According to Cadillac, there's only one manual V8 rear wheel drive sedan left in America. And it's the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. It's got a 6.2 liter V8, putting out 668 horsepower. Okay, it's really a technicality. They're trying to act like, oh, we're the only rear wheel drive V8 car left with the main transmission. No, the Mustangs have them, right? But technically, oh, the Mustang isn't a sedan because they only have two doors. They never made any Mustangs that I've ever seen that had four doors. So technically, oh, it's not a sedan. It's it's a coupe. But then again, when I was a kid, we had two-door sedans. So to me, it's a bunch of polarity. Cadillac's just bragging at it to say we're the only ones left. It's a car. I don't care what you want to call it. It's not a truck. It's a car. I'm talking about the real Mustang, not the stupid electric that they call a Mustang. It's not a Mustang. It's an electric SUV. I'm talking about the real Mustang car. You can still get a V8 with the manual transmission in the thing. So this bragging by Cadillac, they're the only ones that have a rear wheel drive manual transmission car left. No, not really. You know, they, they're so technical. The difference is meaningless. There are other cars with manual transmissions. Well, it looks like the Canadians have some sense. Phase one of building small nuclear reactors in Ontario is now complete. They're making these small ones. Now, they're not as small as you might think. Now, they're building a small nuclear reactor east of Toronto. One of the reactors has been completed on time and on budget. And when they get all of these small reactors up that they're building, it's going to make enough power for one million homes. So, don't think that, oh, gee, they're small nuclear, they don't create any power. They create a good amount of power. They just take up a smaller footprint. The Canadians also said that a subsidiary of Ontario Power Generation has gotten a $360 million deal to help refurbish a nuclear plant in Romania. So they're refurbishing the old ones. Smart idea. Let's do this. Let's get these things going. We need electricity. We're not going to be dependent on wind power or solar power. Doesn't work all the time. Costs a lot of money. Has a very limited lifespan. Finally, some of these people are getting their act into gear and doing something that makes total sense. Yeah, you have to pay for it. But hey, if you don't pay for it, half-assed solutions like wind power and solar panels that don't make that much electricity, it's going to cost more in the long run. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.